Have you asked? Have you asked your friends if Jesus Christ is their Savior? Have you shared your story of your relationship with Jesus and, and you being born again with someone else? Are you bold enough to go home to your spouse, visit with your significant other, or tell a coworker about the worship experience you had with God this morning? Are you ready to go to the ends of the earth, if necessary, to tell unbelievers about the saving grace of your Savior, Jesus Christ? Philip was ready. Philip was ready to ask. Philip asked the Ethiopian if he wanted to know more about what he was reading. And as a consequence, a man was baptized, and a life was saved for Jesus. But first, Philip had to ask. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, help us to be bold enough to ask. To ask people if they know Jesus Christ. And so now, Lord, I ask that you take these words of mine, mold them, shape them any way you wish, so that they become your words, both for our hearing and for our doing. All this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. The story is told about Henry Ford purchasing a large insurance policy. In fact, it was such news that the Detroit newspapers blazoned that fact across their papers since the amount was so large and Ford was so prominent. The news story was read by one of Ford's old friends who happened to be in the insurance business. The old friend went to confront Ford to see if the story was true. And when Ford assured him that it was, the friend asked him why the policy had not been purchased from him since he was a personal friend and he had been in the insurance business for so many years. And Ford's reply was, you never asked. You never asked. How many of our friends can say to us, you never asked me, as to our sharing Christ with them? Well, Philip asked, and the Ethiopian listened. And so we must be willing and ready to share our faith with others. This is called evangelism. And to so many Christians, that word brings to mind a feeling of doubt or shame or sometimes even fear. Many times we don't feel secure enough in our own Christian skins to think that we can share our Christianity with others. But the best way to build that bridge and share is by developing relationships with others. As Christians, we can no longer be keepers of the aquarium we have to once again be fishers of men and women and children. I don't know about you, but I believe that many people are really spiritually hungry and, and they're ready to talk about their spiritual life. But the question is, how do we bring God into our conversations? And, and how do we invite our friends to enter into a personal relationship with Christ for themselves? Well, let's look at God's servant, Philip. Philip as an example of four principles we can use in our lives from this Acts passage today. First, we need to be personally connected with God. We first find Philip having a spiritual conversation along the roadway. He had been in Samaria where he had preached Christ and, and many believed. And to make this a little more challenging, this was also the time that Saul, who we know as Paul, was going around trying to destroy the Christian church. Now, I don't think we have a Saul in our neighborhood right now, so it should be easy for us to preach and, and share Jesus without being dragged off and killed. An angel of the Lord came to Philip and said, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out. The first principle we see is that sharing God's love with others is linked to our own special relationship with Jesus. God said go, and Philip took off. He was having a good time in Samaria, and he didn't understand why he was going down this road. He was faithful to go and do exactly as God commanded him. Do you and I have such a relationship that we are faithful in doing 
what God wants. If we want to be used by God, it will require us to have an open and submissive spirit. We have to be listening to God say to, to us, this is the path for you, now go and walk in it. And the closer we are connected to God, the easier it is for us to hear his voice. And then second, we need to be sure the Lord is leading us. We need to be sure the Lord is leading us. Verse 27 says, So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official. The road God directed Philip to travel led to a particular city, Gaza. There was a definite target, but you see, God's plan did not include Philip actually arriving at that destination. As he was on the way, God met Philip mid-course, and he gave him a God-given opportunity. Many times, we get so wrapped up in the ultimate purpose of our life that we fail to live each day fully. It's easy to say, when I accomplish my next goal, then I'll have time to be used by God or give witness. And so we miss all of those opportunities that God gives us as we are traveling the pathway and the way of life. About eight years ago, my youngest daughter, Mary, was in Akron Children's Hospital for a week after surgery on a very bad staph infection in her left wrist. I had stayed there the entire week in her room with her. We were up at 7.30 this particular morning, and Mary had had her breakfast, and then it was one thing after another. Doctors were in, there was dressing changes, arrangements were being made to go home the next day with all the medical equipment and things that I would need to, to give her IVs and nurse her back to health. And it was getting near 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I still didn't have anything to eat. And I was getting hungry, and I still had a phone call to make to update my school superintendent at the time. Now, many of you women know how we men are when, when we're on a mission. You know, the blinders are on, and that's all that we can think about and, and all we can do. And so I finally got away from the room, and I, I went down to that bridge, if you've been at Akron Children's, that bridge that connects the hospital to the parking garage. You see, that's the only place where we could get cell phone reception at the time. And so I made my call, and as my stomach was guiding me to the cafeteria, I ran across a young woman who was struggling to carry a two-year-old child, a car seat, and a pretty loaded bag. Now, I could have gone right past and headed to the cafeteria. God knows that I wanted to. But you see, he led me in a different direction. I could not let that woman fight her way to the car with everything she had to carry and that kid crying too. So I offered to help her carry her things to the car. I, I offered everything but carrying the child. And, and talking about, as we were going, oh, what a wonderful God, day God had made because it was a nice day and, and how blessed that we are. And after getting the things to her car, she thanked me profusely and I said, may God bless you and have a safe trip on the way home. Now, that's a very small Christian witness my focus before this encounter was on eating and, and satisfying my own desires that afternoon and then getting right back to Mary's room. I could have walked right past that woman and the crying child and not gotten involved. But you see, here was an opportunity to show some Christian love, small as it was, to a mother in need. My point is this. If we only open our eyes each day and we let God guide and lead us, we can find so many opportunities to glorify him. God was leading Philip. Well, the third principle for sharing your faith is what we may call the law of convenience and relationship. The law of convenience and relationship. You see, in verse 29, Philip's on the road, and the Spirit says to Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. If you are going to influence people in a relationship, you see you have to be close, and you have to be available, and you have to be willing to draw near to them. The law of convenience and relationship means you have to connect with that person with a warm and a genuine concern. 
One of the great challenges as well as one of the great tragedies of the church today is the tendency to no longer connect to the culture in which we live. Did you know that since the beginning of the holiness movement of which the Methodist Church is a part, we have had to resist the withdrawal mentality of Christian living? The tendency of the church has been to separate herself from the sin of the world, not by connecting to it. Too often we have removed ourselves from getting too close to the world in which we live for fear that the world might influence us. Unfortunately, the flip side is as true as well. We, the church, are no longer influencing the world as much as we can. When we connect with people, we must begin where they are, with their questions and with their needs. If they're starving, they need to be fed first. If they are hurting physically, we need to show we really care for their hurt. The way we grow and impact a community when we build relationships is with those who are lost and searching and hurting. You see, it's during those times that spiritual conversations will begin to occur as we become more compassionate and see others as Christ sees them. In verse 30, Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And the eunuch replied, How can I unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him in the chariot to teach him. When people ask us questions, you see, it gives us the right to share the good news. 1 Peter 3.15 says this, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. When people ask what makes the difference in your life, be prepared to give them an example, to share the reason that you have this hope, and to do it with gentleness and respect. And then the final and fourth principle is simply to share the good news. That's what Philip did. He started explaining the passage the eunuch was already reading. And when people ask questions, you see, they are generally looking for particular answers. Their questions are indicators of what is important in their lives, and that's where we begin. There's a simple and silent prayer that I use in these situations. Dear God, please give me the right words to say and help me to say them in the right way. God is faithful. All we have to do is to share the difference God has made in our own lives And the outcome of that conversation is then up to God and to that person. You see, God is in the life-transforming business. It's his desire to revolutionize hate and darkness in this world and to cause people to step from darkness into the light. Jesus is coming back soon, but he is giving us, his church, a, a little bit more time to do what we have been commissioned and called to do. God needs us to get out there and start loving people and be willing to engage in spiritual conversations with them, just like Philip. If you have been following along with us in Acts, you know that God saved 3,000 people at Pentecost, then 2,000 people on Solomon's porch, and then multitudes in Samaria. And so now with Philip, God is converting one person at a time through a believer engaging a seeker in a relationship and in a conversation. As I look out over this congregation, I can see people who are here today whose lives have been radically transformed from just a short time ago. Because you see, someone was willing to develop a relationship with you genuinely love you and then witness to you through their lifestyle and through conversation. Now we must do the same for others. I challenge you to act as Philip, to be personally connected with God, to be sure that the Lord is leading, to follow the law of convenience and relationship, and most of all, be ready to share the good news. God sought for a man and found Philip. 
Philip sought for a man and found the eunuch. The eunuch sought for a man and found Jesus. If you are a believer, you sought for a Savior, and you found Jesus, and your life was changed. So whose life do you want God to change? Who are you seeking to make that happen? Lord God, we give you thanks for these stories that Luke recorded for us. Lord, help us to be like Philip, to go to the ends of the earth in order to transform one person and bring them to the saving grace and mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, help us to be bold in our lives today, throughout this week, and forever, to be a witness through our lifestyle, through our conversations, through our relationships with other people, that they might come to know your Son, Jesus Christ. And all this we ask in his name. Amen.